colonialism and tribal societies tribal societies and economies india displays a very high degree of social and ethnic diversity the population of india subsumes within it a multitude of caste and tribal groups representing different stages in the social evolution of the human kind according to the census of 2001 84.3 million population 8.2% of the total population of the country was registered as scheduled tribe it is to be noted that nearly one third of the tribal population of the country is concentrated in 15 districts of jharkhand odisha chatisgarh madhya pradesh gujarat maharashtra and rajasthan states the largest tribal group belongs to the gonds 7.4 million followed by bheels 7.3 million santhals 4.2 million mizos 2.0 million orounds etc what is a tribe the word tribe generally refers to a state of tribalism which is ethnic as well as political a tribe is also known as a janjati or adivasi andre bethel opines a tribe is in an ideal state a self-contained unit it constitutes a society in itself the term tribe is usually applied to the aboriginal population inhabiting the most inaccessible hilly and mountainous tracts of india a tribal group speaks a definite language belongs to a distinct racial group follows a typical religion and performs various rituals the tribals live in natural surroundings their habitations consist of a few huts often arranged in two or four rows in a grove of trees these huts have generally stone paved or plastered floors mud walls and thatched roofs they subsist on local resources depending upon their physical environment they practice a variety of economic activities like hunting food gathering fishing animal husbandry and farming family is the basic social unit of the tribal communities women perform various domestic economic and cultural functions they engage themselves in food gathering collecting firewood fetching water cooking cleaning etc sometimes they have to do various agricultural activities too men folk participate in forest cutting plot clearing plowing hunting fishing etc changes within tribal economies and societies in the 19th century in the 19th century under the british rule the adivasis formed the poorest of the poor part of the society in terms of both income and human resources time to time enactment of forest and land revenue laws which triggered the demand of access to their traditional resources led to the cultural and identity crisis among the adivasis the laying of road and rail tracks mining and construction of hydropower projects in their hilly and forest areas further depleted their resources and brought uncertainty misery and poverty into the adivasi psyche nothing was done to improve the living conditions of the adivasis they are still fighting with hunger and disease the annual death rate is also quite alarming the data available on the health and status of the adivasi population clearly shows that both the maternal mortality and infant mortality were more than double the rates when compared with the advanced regions one writer has rightly remarked the cycle between hunger disease low level of productivity low wages indebtedness reduced consumption levels is reflective of how the development process has largely bypassed the tribals the outcome of the economic social and religious factors has been several adivasi revolts insurgencies and guerrilla warfare tribal revolts as a result of these factors there were revolts of the tribals in different parts of the country but they were quite common in the northeastern and chota nagpur regions of the country tribal revolts in the northeastern region the first tribal revolt in the northeastern region 
was that of the Khasis, a prominent tribe who occupied the hilly region between Jentia Hills in the east and the Garo Hills in the west. The Khasis were powerful because of the presence of the British troops in their neighboring territories and the attempt of the British to construct a road passing through their area, joining Silhet with the new Burmese areas of Karakan and Tamasim, which the British had acquired as a result of the First Burmese War, 1824-26. to The revolt continued for four years, 1829-1833. to The Khasi chiefs, under the leadership of Tirut Singh of Nongkla, wanted to drive away the lowland strangers from their country. On 5th May 1829, a strong party of the Khasis, aided by the Garos, raided Nongklo and massacred a large number of Europeans and Bengalis who were working under them. They burned the European settlements, released the convicts employed in the construction of the road, and marched towards Cherapunji in search of Mr. Scott, the political agent of Assam. Tirut Singh wanted other hill tribes like the Bhots, Singpos, and others to throw off the foreign yoke of the English. The Khasis, estimated to be 10,000 in number, caused much panic among the British officials. The British forces had a tough time to deal with them. They burned Khasi villages one after the other. Ultimately, Tirat Singh surrendered in January 1833 on the promise of sparing his life. Another rebellion of the hill tribe, Singpos, broke out in 1830. The Assamese, too, did not lag behind. They called upon other hill tribes like the Khamtis, Garos and Nagas to rise against the British. They attacked the British troops stationed in Assam and killed many of them. They rose in revolt again in 1839 and killed many British people. The Nagas broke into insurrection in 1844 and killed the in-charge of Dimapur police outpost. The Kukis, inhabiting the Lushai Hills and other hills of Manipur, raised a revolt in 1826 and again in 1844 and 1849. They raided the British territory and held the British forces at bay until they were subdued tribal revolts in the Chota Nagpur region. The Chota Nagpur region consists of thickly forested hills and plateaus extending in the states of West Bengal, Jharkhand and Odisha. It forms the habitat of several tribes, including Santhals, Kols, Mundas, Kons, etc. The Kols or Kolarians were the first to rise in revolt against the gradual extension of the British authority in their area. These freedom-loving people zealously guarded their frontiers for a long time and did not allow any stranger to enter their territory. They resisted the attempt of the British officials to enter their territory. Many of their villages were burned and people killed. In 1827, they surrendered but only temporarily. Then, there was the revolt of Mundas in the Chota Nagpur region in 1830-31. The Kohls also joined them. This insurrection was caused by the new policy of farming revenue to outsiders and introduction of judicial and revenue regulation of the government into their country. The rebellion soon spread over a vast area, including Ranchi, Hazaribagh, Palamu and Manbhum. The wrath of the rebels was against the foreign settlers, about a thousand of whom were either killed or burned in their homes. The military forces found it difficult to control them. Some of the leaders like Buddha Bhagat fought to the last, then surrendered. After extensive military operations, the revolt was suppressed in March 1832. But there, Kohls and Mundas, refractory activities continued up to 1836 and 1837 before they finally submitted to the British authority. Then, there was insurrection of the Kohns in 1846, occupying a large territory in the Chota Nagpur region, bounding Odisha. They feared that the British would misappropriate their lands, exact forced labor, 
and impose heavy taxes, they attacked the camp of Captain MacPherson and compelled him to surrender 170 men. The other neighbouring tribes also joined the insurrection, which lasted for another three years. The rebellion was suppressed in 1848. But this time the British acted wisely, recalled an exiled Khon chief and placed him as the head of the Khons. This wise step pacified the Khons. Then there was the Santhal Rebellion in 1855-56 to in the Chota Nagpur area, bounding Bengal. This rebellion was as much against the British police and revenue officials as it was against the oppression of the Zamindars and the Mahajans. Under the leadership of two brothers, Sidhu and Kanhu, they met in large numbers, about 10,000, in June 1855. They cut off postal and railway communications between Bhagalpur and Rajmahal and were in complete control of this area. Armed chiefly with swords and poisoned arrows, they carried fire and attacked every outlying European bungalow and murdered many English railway servants and police officers. The authorities were taken by surprise and panic-stricken people fled by thousands. When they were pursued by the British forces, they took shelter in the thick jungles. Till February 1856, they showed no signs of submission and were openly at war with the British. A regular military campaign had to be organised against them. Their leaders were arrested and most inhuman barbarities were practised against them after they were defeated. Birsa Munda The Mundas, also called Horoko, are a major tribe of India inhabiting the Chota Nagpur Plateau region in Jharkhand. They practiced sedentary cultivation. Tribal revolts continued even after the revolt of 1857. One such attempt was made by Birsa Munda, who was born in 1875. He joined the German mission, but reverted to the original Munda faith of his ancestors. A visionary and great freedom fighter, Birsa saw the injustice meted out to his fellow tribals. He organized them in a group and led agitation against forcible grabbing of the land of tribals by non-tribals and then rulers of the country, the British. His movement was aimed to prevent his fellow tribals from becoming bonded labourers and to check exploitation of their wealth. Birsa motivated tribals to adhere to their rich culture and rituals and asked them not to budge under any pressure. Birsa was a visionary who saw the seed of revolution against the tribals, which gave rise to tribal movements across the tribal regions of the country. His movement was also directed against the zamindars and other money lenders who were indulging in all sorts of exploitation to grab the land and wealth of the tribals in order to make them bonded labors. He asked his fellow tribals to raise voice against the imperial system and establish their own rule. His movement brought thousands of tribals under single umbrella and helped tribals in gaining their right on forest land, which had been used and tilled by their ancestors since ancient time. At a time when there was a terror of British regime, he organized protest marches and agitations for the remission of forest dues. During his short life, he did what many could not do even in a long life. He died at a very young age of 25 years, but his deeds and agitations shattered the roots of the British. His movement forced the colonial government for the promulgation of the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act, 1908. This act was the outcome of his dedicated struggle against the discrimination experienced by the tribals. Considering his contribution in the struggle for freedom, he is known as Dharti Abba. The government of India has dedicated a statue in his memory in the premises of parliament. It has also enacted relevant laws and implemented policies in the interest of the tribals. In addition to this, there are several prominent educational institutes functioning across the country in his name. We salute this great son of our motherland for his selfless sacrifice in the interest of his countrymen.